George Saunders once said, When you read a short story, you come out a little more aware and a little more in love with the world around you. In a similar assessment, Neil Gaiman is quoted as saying, The short story is still like the novel's wayward younger brother. We know that it's not respectable, but I think that can also add to the glory of it. It is unwise to assume that the skills involved in being a novelist easily transfer to the short story. Long distance runners tend to be tall and slim, while sprinters are generally built like tanks. The following list contains the work of some of the greatest sprinters in literary history. Number 10. The Shadow Industry by Peter Carey. One of the greatest distillations of consumerism in all English literature. In its use of repetition, it is somewhat like a sestina, and its closing line makes it a masterpiece of post-modernity. Also recommended by the same author, The Schoolboy Prank, which anybody who went to an all-boys school will find painfully relatable. At number 9, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Originally published in The New Yorker in 1948, Shirley Jackson's The Lottery describes a local custom with careful detail. The ending is one of the most shocking and disturbing in all of English literature. Debate rages as to what the ending is saying. Perhaps it is a warning about blindly following traditions. Or maybe is it about the dangers of scapegoating. Either way, there is a reason why it is considered a classic of American literature. Also recommended by the same author, The Demon Lover, a story about a jilted bride which showcases Jackson's insights into society's treatment of women. At number 8, Good Country People by Flannery O'Connor. Flannery O'Connor was a devout Catholic who often used religious themes in her work. In Good Country People, protagonist Holger has a PhD in philosophy and fancies herself as a rebellious type until she encounters a Bible salesman. Holger is missing a leg after a childhood accident and she takes pride in rejecting societal values such as beauty and domesticity but she ends up having an unpleasant realisation about the limits of her intellectualism. Also recommended by the same author, A Good Man is Hard to Find, about an escaped criminal who encounters an innocent family and explores the theme of divine grace in Catholic ideology. Number 7. The Mysterious Stranger by Mark Twain. Even though it's set in 16th century Austria, it gives early 20th century anthropocentrism a kick in the teeth. Admittedly, this might have been developed into a novel had Twain lived longer, and there is no consensus as to what the most faithful version of the short story is, but it does more to take apart organised religion than the remarks of Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins put together. Also recommended by the same author, Luck is about a complete idiot who achieves all kinds of success, without knowing how little he deserves it. You can draw your own comparisons to real-life people. Number 6. The Story of Tomoda and Matsunaga by Tanizaki Junichiro. This multi-layered mystery about an absentee husband keeps the reader guessing until the very end. Published in 1926, it is filled with themes that are still red-hot today. Identity, race, east and west, sexual misconduct and globalization. Also recommended by the same authors, his novels The Makioka Sisters and Quicksand. At number 5, Two Words by Isabel Allende. Allende's best work is done in her novels, but her collection, The Stories of Eva Luna, is enchanting. Two Words tackles the issue of literacy itself, as the protagonist, Belisa Crepusculario, is responsible for writing political speeches for an ambitious colonel. As with The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, it keeps the reader guessing till the end and lives long in the memory. Also recommended by the same author, her breakthrough novel, A House of the Spirits, and Paula, her memoir of losing a daughter to illness. 4. The First Class Passenger by Anton Chekhov A reminder that society's obsession with celebrity is neither a recent nor uniquely Western phenomenon. It is about an intellectual lamenting his lack of fame or status to a stranger on a train until he learns who that stranger is. It's also a nice little anecdote on how intellectuals deal with the resentment of not having much influence outside their own citadels. 
also recommended by the same author, The Devil and the Shoemaker, which explores the old cliché about why we should be careful what we wish for. Number three, Little Louise Rock by Guy de Maupassant. A suspenseful story about madness and murder. The picture it paints of repression in the ruling class illustrates why so many people in positions of great responsibility, judges, surgeons, etc., end up developing psychological issues. And like Chekhov's The Devil and the Shoemaker, it shows that the rich live lives of quiet desperation, just like the rest of us. Also recommended by the same author, Mother Sauvage is the most powerful non-combat story about war I have ever read. Number two, The Garden Party by Catherine Mansfield. Few writers in history had such minute attention to detail when it came to evoking unexpressed emotions and understanding the repression that keeps society ticking along. The Garden Party is a story of classism, in which gentility has an uncomfortable encounter with death, and can probably best be described as a tragedy of manners. Like most great fiction, it asks more questions than it answers. Also recommended by the same author, The Wind Blows, a mesmerizing tale of the mundane. At number one, A Story by Maupassant by Frank O'Connor. A rather confusing title, but O'Connor's A Story by Maupassant brings it all together quite unlike anything else. The main character's trajectory is his changing opinion about the work of Guy de Maupassant, with a concluding statement about poetry that distills libraries and lifetimes. Also recommended by the same author, The Genius, a coming-of-age tale that all those who grew up as loners will relate to. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments below.